All right, we're live. The Resilient Body Workshop Series continues tonight. This is the last one, and we're gonna go over the feet and ankles today. Resilient feet and ankles and how to get them. All right, so folks, welcome. Let me start off by saying this workshop is for you if you have foot pain and you can't walk normally, you have a tender heel when you wake up, you know, that sucks, who wants that? And your feet are sore at the end of the day. You're walking around, you're standing, whether you're work or at home. Um, you have an old ankle sprain and your ankles are tight. And, or you don't have any foot pain. You don't have any foot or ankle pain, you wanna keep it that way, all right? Some things that you're gonna to learn tonight, how the ankle and the foot can cause knee pain or, can, or the, how the ankle can cause foot or knee pain. Right? Everything's connected in that chain when the foot hits the ground. How the ankle can limit your ability to squat and move. What causes plantar fasciitis and simple stretches, right? To unlock the stiff ankles and feet. All right, what's in it for you? What are you guys going to learn out of this? I'm going to tell you, you're going to improve your ability to squat. We, we've gone over squats in the past uh, couple of workshops, but today we're going to unlock the full chain and figure out if the ankle and foot is the limitation to your squat today. And we're gonna reduce knee pain if you take stairs, right? So if you go downstairs, folks, and you're having any type of knee pain and you're thinking, all right, I just need to treat my knee, maybe not, because our body functions in this, everything's connected. And you know what? Sometimes the pain isn't the site of the dysfunction. So we got to look up and down the chain. It's, could it be the hip? We've covered that before, or it could be the foot and ankle. We're going to cover that tonight. We want to improve your movement efficiency with workouts. So if you're working out, if you're doing something hard, you want to be efficient. You want to expend the least amount of energy when you're working out, or else you're just going to make it more difficult for yourself. So you move efficiently and you want to make sure that you have enough mobility and range of motion so you can go through these workouts with less effort or else you're working against your own body. And then finally, you want to avoid those gnarly toes in the summer. When we're wearing those open-toed shoes, nobody wants to see that. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you a couple of things to fix that tonight. All right, like every week, again, I'm gonna go over, this is not physical therapy. This is just some advice that I have put together over 20 years of experience that I, give to a general population some of the common things all right so if you're dealing with something specific this the things that we go over today may not be for you you might need to have something specific individual uh focused personal uh evaluation so that we can develop a, a customized treatment plan to get the root cause of your dysfunction all right so now, again, this is the last time, so if you're going to stay to the end, you're going to, we're, somebody's going to get this thing. It's right here. The MP5. I got it right here. Someone's going to get this. It's a vibrating massager ball. It's awesome. If you've used a lacrosse ball or a foam roller, this is like taking that up a hundred times. So somebody's, somebody's going to get that. All right. So again, a little quick intro for me. My name is Dr. Paul Cho, owner of Part 5 PT here in Randolph, New Jersey, and also see patients in Boundbrook, New Jersey. Been in the physical therapy field for over 20 years. My goal, again, is to help active adults get back to doing the things that they love to do to, you know, avoid pain medications, injections, and surgeries, even if you've tried physical therapy before, so that you can move better, feel better, and play better. All right? So now moving into the stretches and mobility. If we're gonna do something tonight, make sure it doesn't hurt. Um, and to create permanent change in tissues, we wanna hold stretches for at least 30 seconds, some static stretches for 30 seconds, and then the joint mobilizations, try and do them for at least two minutes. Okay, so that, that can create permanent change in the tissue. Any stretch that's held for less than 30 seconds, what happens is that you lengthen that tissue and then it just snaps back into a short position again. You wanna avoid that. So hold it for at least 30 seconds and to really unlock those joints, you wanna do a mobilization for two minutes. All right, again, a quick review of the joint by joint approach. 
body functions on this alternating pattern of stability and mobility. If that pattern is disrupted, pain and injury is the result. What we're most concerned with today is gonna to be the foot, the stable segment. It should be stable so that we can push and move off of that stable segment. And then the ankle should be mobile. All right, and I'm going to, we're gonna talk about how those roles get reversed very easily. The foot can become mobile or unstable and the ankle can be, become stable or less mobile. We don't want that, we don't want that. All right, so here's the pretest. If you are wearing shoes and socks, take them off right now, all right? Because you know, you came here, we're gonna do this workshop where we're gonna talk about feet and ankles. Take those shoes off, take those socks off. And now let's get some tests. All right, first is the ankle wall test. And in the squat test we've done, but we're gonna do a little bit of a tweak today with the heels elevated and see if that changes our ability to squat and then big toe extension. All right, so here's the wall test. We wanna get a vertical surface. Could be a wall, could be a door jam, doesn't matter. And then get your foot about five inches away from it. Keep the heel down, you're gonna push that knee forward. If that knee doesn't touch the wall, then you've got a tight ankle, all right? And also, if you're looking down at your thigh, the thigh direction should match the direction of your foot. If your foot, foot's pointing straight and you're moving your knee forward, that knee should track directly in the same direction as your foot. All right, that's our wall test. And then we've done this before. We've done squats. Can you get your hips below your knees? Physiologically, you should be able to get your knees into your chest, like we've tested in the other workshops. Right, I'm gonna bring my camera down, I've got my bare feet. So, we're gonna assume our squat stance. We're looking for hips below knees. If you cannot get into this position, move down something, can't get here, then you're gonna put something underneath your heels. All right, so I've got this little uh, foam bolster here. Half of the roll, I'm gonna get my heels on top of that. My, all of my feet are gonna be down I'm still gonna make, uh, get to that same squat width, and I'm gonna squat down. If that is easier for you, then that means that it's not a hip or a knee problem, it's an ankle problem. Your ankles are tight, and that's why you can't squat below parallel. All right? The next one we're gonna look at is the big toe extension. You're just gonna grab your foot, pull back your toe. That angle with that red line should be about 70 to 90 degrees. If you can't get that angle, we gotta work on that tonight, all right? But why is this important? The foot is important because it dictates everything that happens above it. When your foot hits the ground, everything changes. From the knee, hip, we're gonna go through, look at that later, and it's often overlooked. People don't think about their feet as often. They neglect them, just shove them, shove them in shoes, make it look nice in the shoe, get them some nice sneakers, and then forget about your feet. Why is a big toe extension so important? It's because of this. Your foot, every step that you take, that big toe has to extend in that same angle. That toe angle creates a very stable underside of your foot. All right, we have this plant called fascia, this connected tissue underneath that foot that goes from the heel to the ball of your foot. When that big toe extends, it creates tension in the fascia, which creates a very stable foot for our muscles to push off them. So if you're a runner, a sprinter, a jumper, that big toe extension is the key to unlocking your power and your efficiency. But if your foot looks like this, this is not good. It's a bunion. It's basically where the angle of the big toe is kind of turned in and tries to meet the other side. This is generally paired or due to a collapsed arch, a very mobile, mobile midfoot, and very tight ankles. So if your ankle is tight, your body will try and gain that mobility elsewhere, somewhere else. And it generally gets it to the midfoot. And at that midfoot, every time your foot hits the ground, really flattens out what we call pronates Typically what happens is that big toe starts to go in and this is uh, not good, right? There's some ways if you catch this early, you can reverse it. But 
a lot of times when it's this bad, it's it's a tough surgery to get back. It's a tough surgery. It's a long it's a long rehab after that type of surgery to correct. So we touched on plantar fasciitis. Uh, the plantar fascia is this connected tissue. When it is irritated, when the tension of that fascia becomes too great, it starts to pull on the attachment point at the heel. And that becomes tender, inflamed, and painful, especially when you first get up out of bed and put your feet on the ground and start to walk. If you're experiencing this in the morning, one, you have to work on your ankle mobility. Get your ankle more flexible and that will decrease that heel plantar fasciitis pain, okay? Again, ankle has to be mobile, the foot needs to be stable. And a lot of times it happens first thing in the morning because of the position our ankle is in throughout the night. So you think about like when you're, when you're sleeping, your foot is basically like this, all right? And then that position shortens the calf and everything underneath. And then the first thing you do is you stand up, you put immediate weight on there and it's a big, quick stretch. And that creates that micro trauma right into the heel. All right. Oh, we got a question. The question says, are bunions more common in women? Yes. You know why? Because of the shoes. And we'll go over that later. It's the shoes, you know, those closed toed pointy shoes that look nice with the dress, but not very functional and also high heels. High heels is uh, a culprit for that. Right? All right, next. So, how do you know if you have a coordinating feet or flat feet? This is a quick little test. There's things that we could test in the clinic to decide whether or not your pronation is, tip, uh, is, is clinically a problem or not. Some of it is normal. When you get a, you know, when you're not sitting or when you're not putting weight on your foot, you should have a little arch. No weight bearing on your foot, you've got a little arch. As soon as you put weight on it, it flattens out. The amount of flattening dictates whether or not it is dysfunctional. Too much, you have a flat foot. So this is a quick little test. One way to tell really easily is like, what does your footprint look like? If you get out of the shower, get out of the bath, your feet are wet, and you're walking across a tile floor, does your footprint look like the flat, the normal, the high? Or if you're walking in sand, what does your footprint look like there as well? We don't want it to be flat. We like it to be normal. All right. A flat foot indicates a very unstable surface. So you think about like this arch. The arch is more stable than something that is totally flat. When the joints kind of collapse like that, it's a very unstable foot. And everything kind of is, is wonky from there. But the high arch is not good either because that is way too rigid. So you want to figure out ways to loosen that high arch out or loosen up the tissue underneath the flat foot and then maybe do you need to get orthotics or an insole there's research that shows that you don't need to get an expensive orthotic to correct these types of problems but something over the counter is good enough all right so this is the effect of foot posture on your limb you know again like i said pronation some pronation is normal but anything more than 10 millimeters or a centimeter of drop, especially when it persists and doesn't go away, when, when you're not weight bearing, is, uh, is dysfunctional. This is what happens. So the keystone, the foot unlocks, right? the arch is lost, it internally rotates the knee, internally rotates the hip. This can also cause chain, uh, pain or dysfunction of the chain. You know, your, your hip, your low back, everything. So that's why the foot is so important. And then now, um, another thing is that you think, all right, what about if we just do foot exercises? If I strengthen the muscles in the foot, that'll help the arch. Well, the muscles that are inside the foot are way too weak and their timing is way too slow to create that arch every time that your foot hits the ground, right? You could probably decrease some of, you know, um, increase some uh, shock attenuation and some shock absorption if you do have a strong foot muscle, but it's not gonna totally get rid of that pronation. What can help it is uh, some hip strength. So if the picture here, yeah. So person standing straight, and if you can, you know, get your feet totally straight 
and you contract your glutes strongly, it'll create that rotation of the thigh, the knees rotate out, and that creates a higher arch. Try yourself to stand up and put your feet totally straight, and then squeeze your butt, and then you're getting a little bit of rotation, and you should see, you should see that that close, that increases the arch. All right. So now, once we understand like what can uh, and what can increase and what can decrease the arch, then we think about what is a tripod foot. So this is a tripod foot. It's the base of the big toe, base of the pinky, and the heel. If we're doing any type of lift or exercise, a squat, a deadlift, a clean, where we have to push from the ground, this is the most stable surface that we can push off of. We want to have equal weight bearing through those three points. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's why people train barefoot so that they can make sure that they have as much feedback into the ground, into those three points as much as possible. All right, so let's get into some stretches and exercises. All right, if you are having pain and the foot is tight, I always recommend doing this, getting a ball, rolling out the bottom part of your foot. The foot needs tender loving care. It needs to be out of a shoe, walking, you know, being used just like our hand. There are muscles that are analogous to the ones in our, in our, in our hand, in the foot. All right, so you wanna roll out the, the bottom part of your foot, uh, two minutes, and you can also use a smaller, smaller ball to work on that big toe extension. So you kind of plant it up, right up against that big toe, and then work on mobilizing the ankle at the same time by pushing your knee forward. And you can work on strengthening the toe flexors by gripping the ball and picking it up. There we go. All right. So the next one is gonna be an extreme uh, extension stretch for your big toe. Again, vertical surface, try and get that big toe as high up on it as you can so that the ball in your foot's right at the edge of the, right at the corner of the wall where it meets the floor, and then push your knee forward. If you push your knee forward, if you get to this position, you'll feel a big stretch underneath that big toe and into the, the plantar fascia as well. All right, so these types of things, what we just covered, the ball rolling and this, where you're not holding it static, but pushing forward and in and out of it, that's gonna be two minutes because it's a joint mobilization. All right, and then we have these toe exercises. Like I said, you should be able to do this because you have those muscles that do the same thing to the fingers that you had to do in your foot. So can you pick up your big toe only while keeping the other toes relaxed? Let me see that again, I missed that one. That was impressive. So you have to work on this, keeping, this, keeping the, the other toes relaxed and trying to pick up that big toe. That is super important for the arch and the plantar fascia. And then if you are having a bunion issue, you wanna look at maybe adding spacers in between the feet, getting a shoe that has a wide toe box with not a lot of heel, maybe like a zero uh, differential between forward and backward. And then trying to preserve that space between the big toe and the, uh, the middle toe. And you can work on that. You can do a big toe stretch, get your foot flat on the ground, pull that big toe away and then work on that soft tissue in between the big toe and the other toes. Get your finger in there, massage that out so that you improve the uh, mobility of that tissue so it's not always just closed up in the middle. All right, so there you go, just holding that space open, trying to promote that and um, using the fingers. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, I put up an Instagram video about some uh, toe exercises. What I also like to do is, you know, just grab the, let me show you this, because we're gonna go into some uh, foam rolling anyway. It's just take your foot, I love doing this at the end of the day, just take your foot and then take your fingers and then put them in between the toes, right? So it's like holding your hands. Oh, that's so tight. And you're gonna work on that, right? I just got a cramp because I've been standing on this foot for so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work that out. Flexor, palaces, webs, right through there, right through the arch. So when you're doing the bunion release, you're gonna you know, get your foot flat, pull that away, and then work on that tissue right in the middle. 
But again, getting your fingers in between the toes is another great way to kind of separate that big toe and promote that. The other one, um, let's see what time it is. It is 7.20, I got 10 minutes. Um, you can do the classic foam roll into the cap, right? So I've got this foam roll. And just like when we rolled out the lower, the foot, we can roll out the cap. So, you know, I've got my foam roll here. We can go side to side, we can go up and down, but it's uh, such a small body part. We need to wait on it to create some, some uh, mobility into the tissue, be effective. So I like crossing the leg over top, lifting up my hips, using my hands and going back and forth like that. So the tissue, because this gastroc uh, and the soleus muscle in the cap is like a big piece of meat, we want to make sure that not, we're not going just up and down, but we also want to go left to right, or go to the inside or the outside of the cap. We want to search out where things are tight and somewhat painful and try and uh, reduce that by, you know, doing our breathing and relaxing that muscle as we foam roll that out. Uh, of course, says you can't lift my big. I can't lift just my big toe. Yes, a lot of people because we spend so much time in shoes, we lose that ability to individualize and and lift the big toe or lift the small toe. But those are exercises that you could work on, just like training. Just keep working on. It. All right, so these are some mobilizations that you can do. I recommend doing this with shoes on because if you do have an unstable foot or some type of arch problem or pronation, use the shoe to support it as you're getting into these, uh, these mobilizations. So this is an ankle dorsiflexion mobilization just to kind of promote uh, ankle dorsiflexion, that angle that we talked about with the wall test. You get your foot up as high as you can on a vertical surface and then keep that heel locked and you're gonna push that knee forward. This is um, a video on my YouTube channel if you want to see that again, I've got a whole bunch of other mobilities things that on that website on, on YouTube too. So you want to look through that. Okay. Another one is using a super band to facilitate the joint mobilization at the ankle. All right. So you're going to use like an inch super band, uh, tie it to a low point, get your foot up on an elevated surface. So the band is pulling down and back, put the band below the ankle. And then you're going to, that'll help keep your, keep your heel flat. And then you're going to push that knee forward. All right. So again, you're mobilizing into the position that you want to facilitate, the one that you want to gain for two minutes. So you can also do that same thing going forward. So if you we were pulling the bottom part of your heel and your foot down, we can attach it forward, but put the band higher above the ankle and that pulls the tibia and your fibula, the two bones in the lower part of your leg forward to facilitate that. Okay, you always wanna make sure that you have enough tension. So once you get it on there, you position your body, create tension in the band, and then you move into that dorsiflexion. And then we've got this classic gastroc soleus stretch, right? The gastroc is the stretch of the muscle in the, in the calf that you stretch when the knee is straight or the foot is behind you. And then the soleus, the deeper muscle, is what you stretch when the knee is bent with the foot behind you. I'll give you an example. I like doing this, but a better way is to try and get this stretch with some sort of elevation. So I've got this, uh, this foam roll here. It's um, about maybe two to three inches tall. I'm just gonna put the, uh, the ball of my foot on top and my heel is down. Make sure my foot is pointing straight ahead. Keep my knee straight and I'm going to bring my hip forward. As I bring my hip forward, that's going to create that stretch in the, in the calf. And then that's the gastroc. And if I bend the knee slightly and then do that same thing, step forward, I get that stretch a little bit lower towards the Achilles. And again, as we're doing these stretches, we're going to make sure that the knee is pointing in the same direction as your foot. All right, so let's finish it up. Post-test. If you do the mobilizations, you should be able to get your knee into the wall if you do that ankle, ankle, uh, ankle wall post test. Let me see. What there it is. Yeah, the ankle wall test. So you put your, you get your toe five inches away from the wall, keep your heel down, push your knee into the wall, and see if you can get that. All right. So, but if you are dealing with pain, you got a couple options. Again, the discovery session, 
you know, it's free. It's 30 minutes long. You can call me um, and then we can set that up. Right? It's not a full it's not a full evaluation, but it's a it's a consultation. We have a deeper deeper uh, deeper conversation about what your problems are. You know, if it's something that I could fix and if it'll be a good fit. All right, and then here's a recap of what we learned. We learned how the foot and ankle relate to leg function, your foot structure, the importance of your big toe, and some stretches and mobilizations, and then how to maintain your foot health. All right. There you go, Karen says, my squat was so much better now after those, there you go, there you go. The ankle is the key to everything that's above it. Once we clear that ankle out, once we improve that ankle mobility, your squat's gonna be crazy good, yeah? All right, so here's the moment we all waited for. Who's gonna get this thing? Let me pull up my list here of participants. Um, we got one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we have four attendees that are in the running. And let me get my in the running to get this perfect attendance thing, the vibrating massager, right? So here we go. I've got my random number generator. It's set from one to four. It's going to pick a number between one and four. I'm going to hit the randomize button and you guys can see this. I've got names listed first. So these are the names, Kristen, one, Carla, two, Siva, three, four, Super. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Randomize, randomize, randomize. Number four, the number four, the last person, Subo, you are the grand prize winner of the Perfect Attendance Award. The crowd is going wild. You get the trigger point, MB Vibe, innovative design, three vibration frequencies in the sphere shape, for multi-directional massage. There it is. That's yours. Um, contact me, you're welcome. Contact me and then uh, we can hook up either at the gym and then I can give it to you. All right. And then uh, pretty much this is it. Hopefully through the workshop series, you can get rid of your aches and pains, the stiffness, avoid injury, enjoy your time with your family and friends, be more resilient, confident, Thank you so much, guys, for hanging up, hanging out with me. Um, if you have any questions and stuff, I'm going to hang out and wait for the last person to leave. That's my contact info. Thank you so much. That is the end of the Resilient Body Workshop Series. We've covered everything from neck to foot, and uh, hopefully you're able to build a better body, better resilient body with all the tools and tricks and tips that we've gone over these past six weeks. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Thank you so much.